Well, right then, if you have your Bibles, we'd ask you to turn to the book of Acts, chapter 25. Acts, chapter uh, 25, and we're going to begin reading in verse 22. Acts, chapter 25, and beginning in verse 22. The Bible says, Then Agrippa said unto Festus, I would also hear the, the man myself. Tomorrow, said he, thou shalt hear him. And on the morrow, when Agrippa was come, and Bernice with him, with and Bernice with great pomp, and he was entered into the place of hearing with the chief captains and the principal men of the city, as Festus command, at Festus' commandment, Paul was brought for, forth. And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are present with us, you see this man, about whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. But when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death, that he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord, Wherefore I have brought him forth before you, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that, that, that after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. For it seemeth to me unreasonable to send a prisoner, and not withal to signify the crimes laid against him. I'd like to preach the Lord be my helper tonight on what will they write about you. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your watch care. Lord, we thank you for this place tonight that you've given us to meet in out of the cold, Lord. We thank you for the ones that set before us, Lord. We know that by your own word, they're here by, by your trust. They're here by your movement. They're here by your drawing, Lord. And we pray tonight that you might be magnified in your word. Lord, we pray that you'd stir up the saved that sit here among us, Lord, that we might be a better fit servant for you. Lord, that we might be burdened by the loss that we see every day instead of walking on and wagging our heads. Lord, that we might be stirred up with love and, and desire to see you lifted up. Lord, the loss that meet with us every meeting time, Lord, that tonight would be the night that you would bring life into their hearts. Lord, that you might wake them up to their dreadful condition and the reality of hell. Lord, meet with us tonight. Tonight we pray thee in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, we see some fairly familiar scriptures. Sometimes uh, I fear that we just move on by because it seems to be just a historical record of the events that led up to Paul's uh, uh, imprisonment and ultimately later on his death. But there's a great deal to be seen in here because even God in the events that led up to his testimony, God was in every step of the way. Uh, many times we begin to feel that God has forgotten us or our circumstances may seem a bit more despairing and we think that God is not in them. Uh, let me say the most blessed assurance I have every day is that God is sovereign. Uh, nothing has taken him by surprise. Uh, nothing, uh, the worst thing possibly could be is that he said, have you considered my servant Job? And even in that, he's the initiator, not the response. God never acts by response. He, he doesn't have to uh, flinch when the devil raises his hand, but rather, he's in control of even that. And that's the type of God I want to serve where all things are under his feet. Now, I want you to see in verse 23, and on the morrow, they had made up this, uh, this date, this time, where Paul would be brought before Agrippa. Now, the problem was this, the Jews called for his death, and there was nothing that he had done wrong. Now, we live in a day and age today, and if you don't believe it now, you'll believe it soon where they'll call for our death, even though we've done nothing wrong. Now, you look at the laws that have been passed just in the years since uh, Barack Obama has been in the White House, and things now that are legal and protected that would never have been before. Sodomite marriage, listen, you can't question it today. Do you think one day that they will not walk into this place and demand membership and demand a marriage? Yes, most 
certainly they will. That fight is not done. It's just begun. And we find here Paul before Agrippa. And one day, you mind my words, you will find yourself before the council as well. Uh, but the Bible says the Lord Jesus said, Think no thought, for I'll give you the words in that day. And, and we need to look forward to that. So this event that Paul would stand and give his testimony uh, before Agrippa was de de uh, designed by God. On the morrow when Agrippa was come and Bernus with great pomp and with great pomp and was entered into the place of the hearing. Now, uh, a lot of people say concerning Agrippa when he said, almost thou hast persuaded me. Let me say first of all, uh, with our God, there are no almost. In other words, Agrippa didn't know what he was talking about. Uh, Agrippa saw that no doubt that Paul was innocent and that he believed what he said, but he really did not know what being a Christian was about. If, if, if God had converted him, you know what? He would have been a Christian. He, he would have been born again. And the almost was just words out of a sinner's mouth. Don't ever, get, don't ever get mixed up on the almost and start believing in Armenian theology just because a lost man said almost. There are no almost with God. Uh, it's an impossibility for that to exist. And so we see that also he wanted to be seen. Great pomp and circumstance as he rode in. And, and people waving banners and, and no doubt applauding that he had arrived. You be very cautious of people that like that. You be very cautious of people that enjoy being seen. That like the center of the crowd. Be very cautious about that. Because they're very caught up on themselves. Uh, verse 24, And Festus said, King Agrippa, and all men which are here present with us, ye see this man. Now, no doubt he pointed at Paul. He made reference to him. He said, you see him. Now, when you begin to think about that, if you were being visually looked at tonight, and all this crowd of people about us, and the very dignitary of the day, uh, you could think about what Agrippa was to like a regional president, such as a governor as we have in the state, like the governor of Tennessee, and said, you look at this man. You know what? That's scrutiny. Anybody ever scrutinized your actions? Looked at what you've done real carefully. Looked at who you are real carefully. Um, how many of uh, you have one of these? Every one of us, right? Don't look at me like deer in the headlights. Um, and I, I, I've been noticing about mine, and Donna thinks I'm a little paranoid, but it tells me now where I parked my car. And I don't, have, I don't have a GPS in the car. I, I don't know how it's picked up where my truck is at, but it will let me know where I parked my truck. You know, first of all, that's a little discur uh, disconcerting to me. And, uh, and, and secondly, you know, uh, uh, that shows you're being watched. Now, I, I'm, not, I'm not crazy and I'm not paranoid, but listen, the government knows where you're at. You be rest assured. So one day when they place you before people, think now, what well, you know, what what if, what would you you say, well, I don't do nothing. Listen, in that day you won't have to, have to do anything but Paul, like Paul did, and stand for the truth, and you'll be brought before them, and they'll scrutinize you, and they'll say, Where have you been? What have you done? Uh, what are you doing? And all those things. All those things are a reality that will come. And so they, they visualized Paul and they looked at him and they began to uh, scrutinize who he was. Then he says, About whom all the multitude of the Jews have dealt with me, both at Jerusalem and also here, crying that he ought not to live any longer. Now I want you to see, the group that was against him was the religious. It, 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 was, it wasn't the heathen. The group that was against him was the Jews. The very elite among elite. elite. And you know, in the last day, I fully believe that our government will lock hands with the present day Pope. Everybody's so enthralled with that individual. And when he takes his throne, we're in trouble. 
The very, relig the very religious elite of the day was the Jews. The very religious elite of this day is Roman Catholic people. You be careful. You say, oh, that's foolish, Brother Larry. We'll, we, we, we'll, we'll take the next five years and you tell me I'm foolish then. And so we see, the, we see then Agrippa, uh, 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 Agrippa, Ephesus was preparing the field for Agrippa. Verse 25, but when I found that he had committed nothing worthy of death. Now, I want you to see Agrippa, I'm sorry, Festus wanting to be uh, excused from the responsibility. You know what? That's the age that we live in today is being excused from every responsibility. You know how, why we have so many fatherless homes in this United States? It's men wanting to be excused from their responsibility. I read an article, and I don't know how accurate it is. I really don't. But uh, I was just going through the internet the other night. I saw this article where as many as 20 to 25% of children today are being raised from their, by their grandparents. And you know why? Because young people wanting to be excused from responsibility. Now we find Festus in that situation. He did not want to take the responsibility to say, kill Paul. And you know why? He knew that Paul had done nothing amiss. He knew that he was guiltless. He, he knew that there was no problem. And, and so why didn't Festus take a, a stand and say, listen, this man's done nothing. Well, it's the very same reason you won't speak of Jesus in, in, in the grocery store. It's the very same reason you won't speak the name of Christ on the workplace. It is the very same reason. And we live in a day and age where we're, where, where we're controlled by fear. Why, why did Festus not say, hey, he's not done nothing? Because of fear. Why, why, why do we sometimes get wavery when we think about uh, preaching the gospel? It's fear. Why, why, you know, uh, Brother Justin, uh, Brother Ashley has been very faithful help in this preaching ministry. Uh, you think it's easy to get up and just open the Bible and start up? It's a fearful time. What about coming with me sometime? Would you be embarrassed? It's a fearful time. Why did he do this? He was a fear. He was fearful of the results. And why do we stand what, as though we have nothing uh, to go forward for? It's because we're fearful of the results. So Festus, in other words, was just passing the buck to Agrippa. And when I found that he committed nothing worthy of death, and he himself had appealed to Augustus, I have determined to send him, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord. In other words, I didn't even know what to put in a letter to you. It's because there's nothing against him. Now you remember when the Lord Jesus was crucified, they wrote a thing on top of the cross, a piece of paint, a piece of uh, parchment, no doubt, and put it above the cross saying, Jesus, King of the Jews. That was what he was, that was what his condemnation was about. Here we find Paul probably 50 years later, and there's nothing to write about him. Not even that thing that they wrote about Jesus. There's nothing to write about him. So you don't think that we can be condemned for nothing? You're crazy. And so we see, uh, we see that in, in, <clears throat> in this day that Festus was just passing the buck. Verses 26, of whom I have no certain thing to write unto my Lord, wherefore I have brought him forth before thee, and especially before thee, O King Agrippa, that after examination had, I might have somewhat to write. In other words, if you'll just tell me right, what to write down, I'll write it, we'll kill him, and this thing will be over. So what did, uh, what did Agrippa do? 26 in the first verse, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Now you take that down very carefully, and if you ever have opportunity, and I don't know that we will, in that day, most people will want to shut us up, not to get us to talk. But if you have a situation where you're going to have this opportunity, what will you say? 
Well, what will be your first words? What, what will come out of your mouth in defense of the gospel? What, what will come out of your mouth in defense of what you will believe? Paul had an unusual opportunity. And listen, he didn't waste it. He was a Roman citizen. He was a Jewish citizen. All he would have done is claim either of those rights and they would let him go. You know what? That's the easy way out. And we live in a day and age where we're looking for the easy way out. We need to get down and really be firm in what we believe. Because the day is coming where we'll defend it. And if you're, if you're not ready to defend, you'll be taken away. You know, uh, uh, I read very frequently and, uh, about, the, about the coming of Christ. And it says, as if the days of Noah, so shall the coming uh, of the Son of Man be. As if the days of the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage to the day that Noah entered into the ark. Now, you think about it in a situation today that... It's not going to be that much of an upset when we're arrested. In other words, it's not going to be, oh, these people are treated so badly. No, they'll be glad about it. What about giving a testimony unto, of the faith that lies within you? What about the time the Lord saved your soul? Can, can you say, listen, this is where it began for me. And this is where the Lord's brought me up to now. And, and I'm trusting He will bring me through this as well. Are you prepared to say that? Listen, if all we ever do is talk about religion, certainly we're not going to be prepared in that day, but what? rather we're going to be those that give in. So as Paul is giving permission to speak before all those high authorities of the Roman Empire, what an opportunity that he had. And listen, he made use of it. He, he did well with it. He, he was prepared. Then uh, Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth his hand and answered for himself, I think myself happy. What about you tonight? You know, did you drag in here ready for bed instead of ready for church? Or did you count yourself, I think myself happy? Oh, what a blessed thing to go down at the house of God if it's Wednesday night or Thursday night or Sunday morning. What an opportunity we have to praise the living God of heaven. And we throw it away very, very frequently, not even thinking what a manifold mercy that brought us down to the house of God once again. He said, oh, I count myself. Oh, what, what, a, what a thrill. And you know what? He knew what was before him. He knew very easily before he left the place he might be leaving there without a head. Now he lived for about four or five, maybe even seven years after this. But he didn't know it going in. He counted himself happy. And you know what the problem is today? Everybody like, oh, woe oh, is me. Oh, you just don't know what has happened to me. Well, I don't know personally what's happened to you. This, uh, to you, I'll admit that. But I, knew, I do know this. There's a mighty God in heaven. He gave His life for me. He gave His dear Son for me. And my soul's been saved. What more could I want to count myself as happy? You know what? I don't know about health issues. I don't know about money issues. But I do know this. That God is sovereign on the throne. And at least for me, He saved my never dying. I'm on my way to glory and I count myself happy. I count myself happy. And that's where we should be tonight as well. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I am accused by the Jews, especially because I know thou to be an expert in all customs and questions. Now we won't go too deep into that. But he was going to be sure Agrippa knew that Paul knew there was no reason for him to die. So in that day, even when the law is on our side, we're going to be snuffed out. Everybody said, oh, well, the catching away will happen first. Well, uh, I hope that it does, but I will say this, just because, just because that Israel is not yet risen don't mean things are not going to get rough. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I am a full believer in a pre-tribulation rapture. But listen, 
Tribulations is already on us. You, you look back to the day. I'll tell you what, something to make your soul thrilled. You get down uh, uh, the Fox's Book of Martyrs and you read that thing and you read her through and through and see how, how people suffered for the gospel in times past. And we can't even bring ourselves down to the house of God. God help us. God help us. And we find, and, and you just read through there. And you... you I, I bet you they tell. I bet they would tell you that persecution does come in the church age. I bet they would tell you, yes, I give my life. Yes, it was worth every minute of it. I bet. I bet they would indicate that to you. So as, as we look at these, just remember because we live in the church age, and I believe we'll be caught, caught away before the end. Does not mean that this is not applicable to us. Think about as Paul's relating this. When was that? in about the year 50 or 70. And that was then. Was that not 2,000, maybe 2,100 years before the catching away? And he suffered it. So why would we not? Why, why would that not be for us as well? Now I want you to see in verse 4, My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among my own nation of Jerusalem, known of all Jews. Now here Paul goes a historic record of who he was. He, he validates his Judaism and says, I was a Jew among Jews. He validates his Roman citizenship. He tells exactly who he was on both sides of the family, so to speak. Now, this is the problem, though. It did him no good. You know what? It doesn't matter if Mother and Daddy are Christians or not. You're born lost and undone and hopeless if God doesn't intervene. That's the condition of man. And see, Paul finally got down to that. You know, on the road to Damascus, he realized really what he was. But he wanted Festus to know, and he wanted Agrippa to know, that he wasn't no dummy. That he knew exactly what he was talking about. And so we see that he reviews his life. He tells Agrippa how he arrived at the situation where he was. And then I want you to see in verse uh, 11, he admits, and I punish them oft in every synagogue, meaning Christians. He said, I punish them often. You, uh, again, remember, this is the early day church. So if the early day church endured it, why would we excuse ourselves? Why would we say, oh, that's all going to happen after the catching away? Where do you get that? Show me some Bible for it. You know, I always want, when everybody says concerning the things of God, I want some Bible backup, right? The problem is this, there is none. God's people have suffered from the beginning. So why, why would we be anything less? You know why we haven't seen much of it? Because we've not done much to be suffered. You, you look back at the two great awakenings in our country in the 1700s. Every time it happened, people, people began to be persecuted again. They began to have uh, issues with the government again. They began, they began to uh, uh, have problems. And so maybe, just maybe, the issue now is this. We don't do enough to be persecuted If, you're, if your will's not squeaking, you're not going to oil it, are you? And so we see then, uh, maybe we need to squeak a little bit more. Maybe we need to be a little bit more visual. Maybe we need to be a little bit, a little bit more verbal. So Paul said to those New Testament believers, I punished them off in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and be exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even in, unto strange cities. Now, I want you to see that his invitation was you just blaspheme and everything will be all right. Now, again, you're talking about Jews. Jew, blasphemy to a Jew was to say that there is no God or to say that there is no Jehovah God, the great God the Father. And the blasphemy that Paul wanted them to say that Christ is not the Son of God. 
That, that's, what they desi- that's what he desired. He said, I wanted them. So often we do the same thing. We blaspheme the name of Jesus and not even realize it. We, we blaspheme and say, oh, you know, you say, oh, I would never do that. Well, when you have an opportunity to speak of Christ, do you do it or do you deny him? And in denying him is saying nothing at all, is keeping your lips silent. God, I'm not saying anything in the cause of Christ. And so we see that Paul was a great persecutor of the of the new believers. Verse 12, were unto, uh, I'm sorry, were upon as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priest at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven. Oh, what a, what a blessed, blessed, wonderful thing. You know, there were some other people that saw some things in the way. Huh. You remember Balaam's eyes? Oh, she, had, she saw some things in the way, didn't she? And she would turn this way and try to get around him. She turned that way and try to get around him to find that she crushed old Balaam's leg because he was so stupid that he wouldn't follow the things of God. Yeah. Sounds, uh, I, I believe Balaam is a Baptist, don't you? He yeah, acted like one. And then Balaam Zach preaches a wonderful message. That, that, why? Because something was in the way. And it was a great angel. And it was, it was steering Balaam away from problems and, and, and heartache. So, first of all, don't you force things the way you think they ought to be. Just accept what God gives you. Continue on with whatever the circumstances. Sometimes it may be rough and sometimes it may be tough, but accept them. And I'm not just saying, well, if it's got to be, it's got to be. Say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise Him in the good times. You know, it, you know when we, we, we praise when things are going well, don't we? We praise when everything is, oh, it's so jolly and so great. But what about praising Him when the news is bad? What about giving Him great glory and honor on a regular, every day. Not bad, not good, just a middle of the ground day giving praise and glory and honor for who He is. And so we see that Paul, his way was interrupted. There was something that was there. He saw a brightness. Isn't it a blessed, wonderful thing today that you saw the brightness of the Son of God? When, when you saw him for who he was, when you saw him for an answer to your sin, you say, hey, Brother Larry, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, make your call in an election, sure. You be sure you have what you think you have. Because, listen, nobody has to help me to give my testimony. Oh, what a blessed, wonderful day it was. Uh, I, I would, but I'd never forget it. Even if dementia falls on me, I hope the last thing that I'm able to make connection with is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I can tell somebody of His goodness and what He did in my, in my life. Verse 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth. Now, did you get that? He saw the brightness of God and He saw the trueness of God and, and the immediate result was that He fell before God. How, how long has it been since you fell out before God? Listen, you people, uh, we need to be down on our knees before God. Listen, uh, this election coming up is significant. And I'm not going to get into politics because I know my sovereign God has already selected the winner. But it doesn't excuse me from being responsible, right? We, and, and you look at the Republican nom- nominee, and, and if you don't think it's going to be Donald Trump, you need to rethink this thing. Because it will be. And uh, anybody here in reading the Bible? I laughed for days when I heard this. He was trying to read a scripture at some little town meeting, and he said, Two Corinthians. He didn't even have sense enough to say Second Corinthians. And he's going to be our leader and chief. God help us. And so we, uh, we live in a day where <laughs> it's very likened into this day. And, and, and what we need is a new vision. They fell down before God. He, he could not see the world anymore. He left there for the rest of his life of a very disturbed vision, literally. 
You know what? When, when the Lord saves our soul, you were to get up there with a very disturbed division spiritually, and about the only thing you can see from then on is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? When you're genuinely born again, it'll be that way for a while. But then the muck of this world will get involved. And you'll begin seeing money is a little bit more important than it is. And you'll do this, and you'll do that, and you'll heal the filthiness of this world, and, and maybe get involved in ungodly music, and all that muddled up in there. But Paul left and he couldn't see no more. He couldn't see, literally he was blind for a few days. He couldn't see this, but he could see that. that, that that's a wonderful state to be in. You know when you're closest to God is when you can't see this world anymore. You can't see, you can't see the, the benefit of what this world has to offer. The end of verse 14 the Lord Jesus Christ speaking unto Paul says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. Now I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, the, the statement uh, that the Lord Jesus Christ says, It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Now, what's a prick and a gold for? It's to guide a beast. It is to guide an individual. See, I fully believe from the very time <laughs> when old Stephen was being stoned, he said, lay not this sin to their charge. And it says he laid that, that he <laughs> laid down and went to sleep. He's like, how could a man possibly have the peacefulness to go to sleep in the midst of a stoning? A man as wise as Paul, that said on him. How, how, how could someone possibly be happy and beg forgiveness of his accusers in the very time that they were killing him? That said on Paul's mind. You know, uh, you know why I keep preaching is because I would to God that someday, even if it's just one time, that some foolish word that I might say may lay heavy on someone's mind because the Holy Ghost will use what He will. It don't have to be much. He'll use the, the preached word of God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians to the foolishness of preaching. And sometimes it must seem foolish. But I do know this, that God offered it, so it must be what needs to be done. Right? And so we see then, as, uh, as, as the Lord Jesus speaks life to Paul, <laughs> he goes, who are you? But I love that. He also said, who art thou, Lord? <laughs> Capital L, you're my chief, you're my leader now. I will follow you forever. That, that L, that capital L, Lord, meaning you're my God. Who are you? And he says, I am Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful thing it is today when he says to you spiritually, I am Jesus. I am the one. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I am Jesus. When it becomes more than empty words on a page and he lights your ungodly, dead heart to the truth that there is an answer to sin, and that answer is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I would be very wary if I didn't have something that compared to this. Were you on the Damascus Road and got knocked down? No. Did you hear audibly the words of the Lord Jesus Christ? No. But do you know that you were dead and that he made you alive? Say, so, well, I'm not sure, Brother Larry. Well, I'll say for it, first of all, you better be sure. You better be sure. You don't want to leave this place without it. And I'll give you a couple of measures. Does the preaching of the Word of God thrill your heart? That's a good, good measure of where you're at. When you're home and alone, where do your thoughts incline to? You know where most of them is right in what's in the middle of the front room, right? Mm -hmm. Cons toward the TV. 
and we watch movies too. It has a little disc. Justin let me know that those were retro now. We got to get something new. I don't remember the word, but I know DVDs are on the way out. And uh, or do you or do you contemplate the things of the Lord? Does preaching thrill your heart, or could you let it go? Just you know, that's that's bothering me. What about meeting other people? I tell you what, you're not gonna like everybody. I don't like everybody. And I'd be lying to tell you if I did. But I do have a desire to pray for everybody. We that that that's that's the hallmark of Christian. Do you, do, you, do you love the Lord? And, and oh, what a what a wonderful time it must have been when Paul Paul found, you know when they said Paul your days up they did away with it. But the thing of it is, he wrote thirteen precious letters in those years that were signified by God, and we still have them today. We still look at them, we still read them, we still rejoice in them. So uh, we ought to we ought to thrill with persecution. We ought to be happy that we do live in a day where very likely you are going to have to make some type of decision. I left my wallet at work. I was going to show you my new credit card. I think I showed it last week. It's got a little chip about yay big. And one day they want to move that chip from there to here. Are you going to take it? It's just going to have your information on it. It's just for your benefit. It's nothing bad about it. It's just, just so you can get your Social Security check. Are we going to take that? You know what? I'm beginning to wonder if the Amish had the right idea to start with. They just don't participate in Social Security. Hmm. All right. Word for me and the men before we dismiss tonight. Word for me praise the Lord. Uh, and be like Paul. All right. Any word before we dismiss? Thank the Lord for the message. Amen. Amen. And. Uh...